and welcome to part 8 of the Viking Chair Build. In part 8 of this many part series, who knows how many we're going to get to, maybe 10, maybe 11, we're going to use the uh, cordless drill, we're going to use a um, jigsaw or bayonet saw, and some layout tools. So those are the three things we're going to use in this video, part 8. We have the finished planks for the backrest and the seat, and they happen to be exactly the right size. So we have, when we went to the cut sheet and built the, uh, the technical drawings for the cut sheet in part one, we drew these to scale. So they are one to one scale. And if you put this on here, you can see they are exactly what we need. So for the seat, we're gonna take and cut a swath, a two inch by 27 inch swath off each side. And for the backrest, which is this one right here, same size, so we've done everything correctly. We're going to take and cut a little slot off the bottom. So if you take 10 inches in, 2 inches from the side, we're going to get an 8 inch by 3 quarter inch slot that we're going to cut out. We're going to just use the, uh, the drill and the jigsaw to do that cutting. But first we need to lay these out with uh, some layout tools, probably uh, a couple squares, some rulers, maybe tape measure, and a pencil. So let's go back into the shop, lay out our uh, cuts, and proceed. See you in the shop. Okay, so we're back in the shop, and we're at the layout stage of our Viking chair build. We need for this stage a tri-square, a framing square, and a meter stick or a yard stick, depending if we're using metric or imperial, in this case, imperial measure. And of course, don't forget a pencil. Because you're in the shop, you need to have your safety glasses on and your sleeves rolled up. You're probably not gonna get hurt using a pencil and a couple squares. But other people are working around you and you have to make sure that um, if there is kickback on the machine or if a knot kicks out of the uh, thickness planer, bounces around the room it doesn't hit you in the eyes so you always want to be safe in the shop and, and make sure you're ready for this environment for this workspace so the first thing we're going to do is talk about the tri-square the tri-square is made up of a stock and that's this uh, black handle right here that's called the stock and this part here is called the blade okay that's a tri-square it's a great tool because we can put it on the edge of our board and we can slide along that board and create our 90 degree lines. We also have a carpenter square or it's also called a framing square. Now the framing square also has a couple parts to it. It has the tongue which is this part right here and it has the body or the blade which is this part right here. So we're going to use these two squares and this handy little meter stick, yard stick that has a handle on it, even has a little level, but we won't be using that. So let's lay out our, our seat first of all. So to lay out our seat, what we need to do is we need to measure 27 inches from the end. So I'll place this on 27 and make a mark on zero. And then I can use my tri-square to put against that edge and make a mark approximately two inches in. Then I can take, I can use my tri-square as well to take my two inch measurement and I can put a mark on two here, slide it over here, put a mark on two and then I can use my meter stick to connect those two lines. And I'll do the same for the other side. 27 inches in. These are tri-square to draw a two inch line. Make a mark at two inches. 
thing over here as well. Okay, so that was easy. That's my seat. That's all uh, marked up. I should have eight inches in between. I can check that out to make sure. And I do. So that eight inches is going to fit into the slot of the backrest. So now I can take the backrest. And the backrest is 10 inches from the bottom. So I'll make two marks. And this time I'm going to use my framing square. And I'll put the uh, body or the blade along those two lines. I really only need one line when I'm using a square, but when you have two lines, it does. you can double check to make sure your, your lines are uh, in the correct place. And I'll just take and make a line across here. And I'm going to need another one at three quarters of an inch. That's the thickness of my board. Take my framing square, make another line. And now I'll measure two inches in from the edges. And just connect those two. Now, because I'm going to be cutting out uh, two holes with a, um, with a uh, drill, I'm going to take and use a spade bit that is 3 quarter inches in diameter. So I need to know the center of that spade bit. So I'm also going to take and mark out 3 quarters of an inch in. Basically I'm making a box, a 3 quarter inch box. I'll do that on both sides. And I'll just simply draw an X through the box to create a center point. And that's where I'll put the tip of my speed bore or my spade bit. like that. So there you have it. It's all marked out. I have my slot cut into this one and I have my two inch by 27 inch pieces marked to cut off the size of the, um, the seat. Now that those are cut out I'm going to uh, show you the, I, I think it is, yeah it's a DeWalt cordless drill that we have and I'll show you also the jigsaw as well and we'll proceed with the cuts. So let's begin with the backrest. We're going to cut that slot out and to do that we're going to first of all need to drill two three quarter inch holes. This is our DeWalt cordless drill. It's a variable speed cordless drill and uh, it's got a keyless chuck in it. So this keyless chuck right here uh, there's, there's no special tool to tighten and loosen the jaw on here. You can see that can go smaller and bigger. And uh, that's why they call it a keyless chuck. There's, you just use your hands. So we're going to place the bit. This is called a speed bore bit or a spade bit. It's a three quarter inch and we'll place that into the chuck. And you can if this chuck is in good condition, you can put it in forward and carefully just hold 
the chuck while you tighten it. But it has to be in good condition because if it's not, uh, this can spin in your hands and it can cut your hand. Once you have it snug, then let go of the trigger and just take and turn that chuck until it's nice and tight. That's the safest way and the safest, quickest way that I can explain for you to do that. Okay, so this is a cordless drill. It's variable speed, meaning the harder I push the trigger, faster it goes. It is reversible, so if I press this little button right here, I can go backwards or counterclockwise. I want to go clockwise to spin. It's also clutched, so it has this mechanism here on this collar, which I can turn. Right now it's in direct, if you can see that, direct drive, so it's not clutched. But if I turn this little dial, I can turn it all the way to one. It goes from one to 15 to direct. And I can actually hold that chuck and it won't drill. And the purpose of those settings are basically for when you're putting in small little screws that you don't want to break or you don't want to sink too deep. So then you could, it'll still spin, but once you put too much pressure on it, it stops. And then you just set it. The higher the number, the more pressure it takes to stop the chuck. And it is a dual transmission. So it's got the one and the two. So the one is slow but high torque. And the two is fast for low torque. So we want it on two for drilling holes. We want it to go fast for drilling into wood. It's different if you're drilling into steel. And uh, one is for putting in screws. There you go. That's probably all we need to know about this to get started. So, let's give you a quick close up of the board that we're gonna be cutting holes into. You can see right there by my finger, there is a uh, square with an X through it. And try to center that for you. And there's another one on the other side. We're gonna be drilling right in the middle of that X, two holes. And that'll be our start and our stop of our three quarter inch by eight inch slot. To do this, we wanna clamp our material down. And we want, so this is where that slot is. I want that slot just to be over the edge. I don't want it way out here because then I have more leverage and this is gonna to wanna to push down on me. So I wanna get that nice and close to the table, not quite touching it. And I'll use these c clamps to take and uh, clamp it to the table. Uh-oh, the clamps I got aren't big enough. So pick a bigger one. Now, if you clamp it this way, the handle might be in your way. So it's not a bad idea to clamp it this way so that you have more space to work. I'll just do it this way to measure it. There, now that's nice and snug. I've got a lot of support on there. Ready to go. So the tip of this spade bit, right here, that little sharp point right there, that goes in the middle of that X. And we're going to be taking and we're going to be drilling halfway through the hole just till this is pointing out the other side. We're not going to go all the way through. So we'll put that right on that X and we're going to drill. Oh, I'm on one. Make sure you're on two. I'm going to drill until that point comes through. So I'll drill a little bit and then I'll stop and I'll check it out. When I'm drilling, I want to make sure my left hand and my right hand are on the drill. I don't want to put my hand here in case I slip. I don't want to cut my hand and plus I have control. I also want to try to cut straight. So I'm just taking, as I'm drilling, I'm making sure that I'm, my lines are straight with my drill and I'm not cutting crooked. I can use the drill press to do this, but the table on the drill press is pretty small and it's could be kind of flimsy. Plus we have a lot more cordless drills than we do drill presses. 
So, we're gonna go down so we think we're about halfway through, then stop and check for the tip underneath. And do that again. And there, my tip, I can just feel that point from the other side. If I go through all the way in one shot, it's gonna blow out that material, possibly, most likely, and I won't have a nice finished edge. So now I'm gonna flip this over and, uh, and uh, cut through the other side. I would do this one right now, but I'm gonna see if I can get a close up of that. Um, but normally I would cut two holes, flip it, cut both through the other side. So we'll leave that other one for the close up. Someday I'll have two video cameras so I can do it all at once. I can see this, actually you can't, but I'll show you. You can see that little hole, maybe you can. There it is, see that little hole? And see the hole on this side. So that little hole is what I want as a guide for drilling through this way. So place that like that. Clamp it down again. Okay, so I'll take that and uh, drill all the way through. Let the blade, the bit stop, and bring it back. And I'll do the same with the other hole, and then we can proceed with the jigsaw. We now have our two three-quarter inch holes drilled, and we can proceed to the next step, which is cutting the slot out with our orbital jigsaw. So let's first of all talk about the orbital jigsaw. This is a corded tool that, um, that we use here in the shop. It has a, basically the way it works, it has, has a blade that rides along a guide here and it pistons up and down, cutting in an upward fashion. So it pistons up and down. The blade is, uh, or sorry, the, the machine has a base and this is what rides on the wood that you're, uh, you're cutting. And this base, also called a sole, is tiltable. So you can take this and loosen this uh, screw this little bolt and uh, you can tilt it mostly we use it in the 90 degree fashion it orbits so it it does it can cut straight up and down or it can cut in an orbital fashion so there's a little knob under here that we can adjust and if we're cutting straight up and down it will cut a nicer smoother cut and but it'll be a little slower. But if we're cutting in this orbital fashion, it'll cut fast, but it'll be a little bit more rough. So generally we're not in a big rush and we want a nice cut, so we want it going straight up and down. So on this saw, it's a setting of zero on this orbital knob, okay? The um, machine is fairly safe to use if you have your hands in the correct position. It has this little grip on the top, so that's where your one hand is while the other hand is on the trigger and uh, that way we keep our hand from going in front of the, the uh, saw and getting cut by the blade. It's variable speed so the harder you pull the trigger the faster it goes. You can control this little knob on here and that knob will uh, just basically set you can set it so it only allows you to push the trigger in so far so if you only want to go a certain speed and uh, it has a little lock right here. So if this ever turns on and locks in and won't shut off, that's why, because that lock got pushed in. So you just press the trigger and it pops that lock right out and you're good to go. Now you don't, you wanna make sure that when you're cutting your cord is uh, either visible or you know that you're not gonna cut the cord. So we'll make sure we'll set that up as well. The other thing is, I'm seeing that my C-clamps are actually going to be too close to my slot, the area I'm cutting out. So I'm going to take, if you can see that, they're in the way. I'm going to actually take and pull this out a little bit more. Maybe it won't be as stable, but I can't do the cut otherwise. And if we make that nice and, and tight, I'm sure it'll be just 
stable enough. So tighten that there. And we'll tighten that there. We'll plug in the jigsaw. And then we can proceed with the cut. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the hand that's not operating the trigger, because we can use this right or left handed, is on top of the machine, not in front and not holding the board. That's what the clamps are for. So two hands on the machine, please. Then um, when you start the machine, you can see it running here. What we don't want to do is we don't want to put it in while it's running and try to get it into that hole. We want to start and stop in the area that we're cutting. So if we're cutting, we want to make sure that that, that um, blade stops before we bring it out and again before we put it in. Okay, so I'm all set up. My cord is well out of the reach of that blade. I'm not cutting anything I shouldn't be underneath. I've checked that as well. So I can proceed with the cut. When we place this board just in line with this slot, you can see that uh, I'm going to need to actually cut with the jigsaw right on those on the line. Normally, I would cut to the waist side. In this case, it would be the inside of the line. But um, this is this board must be just a little bit thicker than three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to cut right on the line that I drew, and uh, this is what it looks like. So two hands on the saw, get that blade going at a nice full speed. and let the blade stop and then bring it up. And then you're going to proceed to do the same on the other side. If you run into trouble, remember just to bring that uh, blade to stop before you bring the saw out of the wood. And you can always check too to make sure that blade is on the guide. And let the blade stop. Okay, now the slot that we cut has um, rounded edges on here, rounded ends. So we can just take and uh, cut those square. I believe we'll cut them square. Hmm. If I'm going to be cutting this one here and then possibly routering it, maybe I want them to be a little bit rounded. Let's think about that. Um, let's cut them square. So we're going to continue with that cut to the, to the end. Do the same over here. Turn the saw sideways. And then do the same over here. Now that clamp is in the way, so we'll have to again readjust the board just for that little cut. And then we'll do the exact same thing on this side. We'll just square that out. Okay, I have cut out my slot 
And it's a little bit rough because I cut it with a jigsaw. I can file that down with some reptail files that I uh, have in the drawer just over there. We'll do that later. Before we do any kind of uh, cleaning up of this slot, we're going to cut out the seat portion. We have that marked here so that it fits into the slot. Now I've kind of decided midstream that we're going to be using the table saw in conjunction with the jigsaw to cut that um, to cut these side pieces off. And the reason being is the jigsaw is meant for cutting curves really. It uh, doesn't cut straight lines very well. So if I want this nice and straight, uh, the best thing to do is to use a, a table saw. So I'll, I'll use a table saw for this line and then this line here is going to be uh, used, I'm just going to use a jigsaw for that and this one here. So I'll start by doing those two cuts with the jigsaw. Again, clamp down your material to the table. In this case I can put the handle up because it won't get in the way and here as well, yeah, I can put my handle up because they're far away from my cut. And then I can proceed cutting in the two inches into the board. Okay, so line everything up. Make sure when you start the saw it's not touching the board so it doesn't go up and down on you. And I'm going to cut just to the waist of the side of that line. So in this case it's on the left side of the line. Um, and then I can file to the line or sand to the line. Okay, whoops. Now that, if that comes out, I'm not sure why it came out so easily, it uh, is going to be pretty warm. So let me just grab some pliers and pull that blade out of there. The lock must have not stopped on the jigsaw. cool down enough to touch. So when I'm putting the blade in I want to make sure to unplug the machine. I can show you actually how to do that now. Okay so this, kick in the tripod here, this here has this nice system where you just pull back this here, not sure what that's called, but you pull that back and it you can put in this T style there where are we there there we are focus could put in that T style of uh, jigsaw blade this doesn't seem to want to focus are we on an autofocus let me check yeah it's on autofocus so, so this part here, you want to make sure the blade is facing forwards. It goes into that slot like so, and then you have to pull this back and push it in at the same time and then release it. And then it should go down on that blade and lock into place. Okay, and then it's nice and snugly in there. Good to go. Okay, so this needs to be turned around and clamped to the table. Plug the machine back in. And we can proceed. Okay, and then we'll just unclamp the project. We have our two cuts into the board here and here and then we'll take the table saw now and we'll cut up to this line. Now it won't cut 
right to the line because the uh, blade is circular and I'll show you that in a, in a minute. We're gonna have to actually cut to this point and then finish it with the jigsaw. Let's get at her. Okay, so we're back at the table saw and we're gonna use this saw to take and cut those straight lines. Now, the saw has a blade that's circular on it so I can only cut up to, uh, let's say right here because if I cut farther, it's gonna cut into, it's gonna cut farther underneath. So I'll just show you the little line I drew. This line right here, do you see that? Where is that? There, that, see that little half circle there, quarter circle? That indicates where the blade is cutting. So if I cut here, if I stop here where the blade is protruding up the, out the top, okay, and then the rest I'm going to cut with the jigsaw. If I go any farther, it's going to cut into my good piece here, and I don't want that cut over here, so I'm going to end it right there. Okay, so we'll take that fence and set it up just so that I'm cutting on that waist side of that line. And it should be one eighth less than two inches because the, the blade is one eighth of an inch. So even though it's a two inch mark, we don't set this on two inches, we set it one eighth less and then it'll cut on that waist side of the line. When you're making this cut, we're going to, uh, we're going to push it through and uh, once it gets to this line that we drew, we're going to stop it with our leg. If we had someone else helping us, they would help stable it, stabilize it. Um, and we have to make sure that we keep the board anchored down while the blade stops. If we move it, there can be a chance that it'll kick back on us. So we want to make sure that we just shut the machine off and wait. My rollers are still set up, my outfeed rollers. So we're good to go with that. And uh, let's see what this looks like. Fence is down, secure. I only have one chance on this, so I don't want to make any mistakes. We're at 90 degrees, good to go. So I shut the machine off and then I just kept it stable while the machine uh, came to a, a stop. And then I can pull this out and then I can do the exact same thing with this side. Okay, just had to make sure we were still recording. So this side here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull this over and hmm, I'm not liking this because what happens is because I took that that uh, cut out of it, I can now push against that. That's not going to work. I'm going to want to actually flip this over this way and do my cut here. So I'm going to have to mark that on the other side and then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to cut from this side. That way I don't have this saw curve right here which can move. I need this tight against the fence, otherwise it'll, it'll kick back and cause some other issues. So, uh, actually, I don't even need to make the mark. I can just set this back to 1 and 7 eighths, which is where it was before. And take this here, which is 1 and 3 quarters, and make that more mark from this jigsaw mark one and three quarters, and that's where my stop line is. There we go. We're gonna fly through this now. Start that up. Okay, 
blade stops, now we can bring it out. Now if you take a look on this here, you can see that that's where I stopped, that's where I drew that little mark, and there's that much room. But on the other side, you can see that I almost made it to this line so that I don't want to go past it. And that's the same as this top one, right? I drew to this mark, I sorry, I cut to this mark, and on the other side, you can see it just went to that point. So I'm just going to finish cutting that with the jigsaw now. Okay, so now we can use this jigsaw just to finish that cut, and then this side piece should just fall off. and I'll do the exact same thing with the other side. I can now take my clamps off. And I can check for fit. Now, don't be discouraged, discouraged if yours doesn't fit. In fact, we actually don't want it to fit because we want it to, we want it just to, to be able to file our slot out to, um, to make sure we have a nice snug fit. So we're gonna take this here, put it over the edge, and see what we got. Yeah, so it actually does fit in the slot this way and this way. It does fit actually quite nicely. I just have to take and make this slot a little bit wider and then that's going to fit quite nicely in there, but not much. Probably a sixteenth of an inch or a millimeter or so. I'm just going to take and cut a little bit off the ends and then that might actually fit in there quite nicely. So I'll just do that with the jigsaw, I'll clamp it back down and uh, go ahead and, and just cut a little bit farther and, uh, and we'll check again for, for fit once I'm done there. Take that out. There we have it. Now, that's how it works. Oh, that's gonna break. Oh no, perfect. Ooh, perfect angle. Feels really nice. Gonna be great for the beach. Now we're not done yet. I still have to router it and put in a little bit of a design to it, but hey, look at this. Pretty stable, fits nice, collapsible chair. Take it with you on your next beach vacation. Let's uh, get to part nine where we take and uh, router the edges, sand it up a bit and make it all pretty.